Uh, good day, grade 12. Welcome to lesson number 75 from the Distinction Bound Student, grade 12. All right, I also have grade 11 and grade 10. Right, in this lesson, we'll start as usual, revise the homework. All right, but I'll just let you mark your homework. Okay, that was activity 67. Okay, let's go to 67. There you go. Just go there and mark yourself. Okay, I've given you enough time. You can pause and mark. Right, today we want to introduce monopolistic. Right, some people confuse monopolistic for monopoly. Look at this monopolistic competition, monopoly. Now, the, the other confusion comes if I remove IC, it becomes monopolist. And monopolist is the monopoly. I don't know. So the difference is there, it's, uh, but, but small. A monopolist is a monopoly and a monopolistic comp uh, business is this one which is different now you might want to say okay but two words there are so many if I say man and I say man I, I seem to be saying the same thing but the other one is an E the other one is an A the one with an A is referring to one man the one with an E is referring to hundred men you see so just a small change you change an a to make it an e it mean it, it means all the difference same applies here just this I see monopolistic it makes all the difference it means there is an industry with many buyers and sellers that are selling heterogeneous products the other one is one firm selling a unique product you see that's different so monopoly monopolistic two different things right so in monopolistic we have many buyers and sellers and what they're selling is 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 uh, heterogeneous products now this we normally refer it to as a hybrid structure now what is a hybrid if you take for instance a, a pit bull I, I don't know much about dogs but let me try if you take a pit bull and a German Shepherd uh, the puppy that they produce is a hybrid see it's not a pit bull it's not a german shepherd it's a hybrid then you could give it a name and call it i don't know what you see that so monopolistic is also hybrid and uh, it's more like the father is the perfect and the mother is the monopoly so you know the baby is monopolistic right so the reason we say it's a hybrid structure is because there are certain characteristics from perfect that exist in monopolistic. Then we have certain characteristics from monopoly that exist in, in, in monopolistic. So this one is the sum to monopoly and perfect, something like that. All right, so it's a hybrid structure, eh? right? Uh, what are the characteristics? Again, I'm not giving you characteristics from my head. This is from the examination guidelines. It's this document here. Right. In this document, we were told by the Department of Education, Economics Department, to uh, you know, compare markets using this criteria. So I'm going to look at number of businesses, nature of product, entrance, control over price, information, examples, demand curve, economic profit, decision making, collusion, productive, and allocated efficiency. Now, let's have a look. Um, okay, yes, we talked about the product. Oh no, we haven't. The product is differentiated or heterogeneous. Look at that. Romance pizza and Japanese pizza. You can tell the difference. You know the difference. McDonald's, Steers, you know the difference. KFC, chicken licken, you know the difference. Right, it's hybrid structure. I explained this one. It's the sun to perfect and monopoly. Control over price. There's little control. Uh, the reason why there is little control is because there are many firms in this industry. Uh, it exists to some extent. Then collusion is not possible simply because there are many firms in this particular industry. And then uh, non-price competition is, yes, it does exist. Have you ever seen McDonald's advertise? Yes, all the time. You see them advertise. But now, you know, if you go to perfect competition, you see that... Um, Pharma A wants really advertises maize. You see him on TV saying, buy my maize, the best maize in South Africa. We'll just look at you crazy. When you advertise your maize, you are advertising for the rest of us. You know, 
uh, because your means is just like ours. Remember, the product is homogeneous. But McDonald's can advertise their Big Mac because yes, for sure, it's the only one. It's, it's the only one that tastes that way because of the way they make it. And their Big Mac is different from their Mac Fist. You see, differentiated products. So they are selling, selling burgers and they have a variety of burgers that taste different. Uh, go to KFC, they also have different meals and they taste different. This one they put that, the other one they put that. And they don't tell us how they make it, so information becomes incomplete. Right, let's see, so collusion, uh, it is not possible, I explained that. Non-price competition, yes, all the time. And then market entry is very easy. Come up with your own recipe, start selling your own chicken. No one is going to restrict you from doing that. As long as you can have a unique way of making whatever it is that you're making. Information is incomplete. Yes, uh, we don't explain to you how we made it. We'll just tell it to you. If you like it, you are going to be our loyal customer. It is often local, and uh, but don't worry much because it's not one of the criteria that we use. I'm going to skip diverse business and it seems like there are other things that I didn't talk about there. Let me find them. Number of firms, many. Nature of product, the product is heterogeneous. Entry is free. Control over price, little. Information, it's incomplete. Examples, fast food outlets. Demand curve, downward sloping, elastic. Uh, economic profits, no, cannot be achieved in the long run, but normal. Decision making, it can affect, uh, but not as much as it does in oligopoly. Collusion, it's impossible, there are way too many. Productive efficiency, to some extent, can be achieved in a way. And then allocative efficiency, also to some extent. All right, so I think I've answered what was missing. Right, let's look at a uh, short run equilibrium position. Right. A Perfect, a, a, monopoly, a monopolistic business can achieve economic profit. Was that economic profit? Yes, it was. All right. This is uh, our monopolistic business. So this is our demand, uh, our axis, the price one, and the quantity. You write in full. Then there is our demand curve. Look at elasticity. D is equal to AR. And there is our MR. Okay, now where is our MC? This is our marginal cost curve. Right, where does it meet our MR? They meet at this point. So this becomes our quantity, 100. What is our price? Same applies as monopoly. There, you see? Uh, let's say 15. Right, now is this firm making profit or loss? We don't know. We'll only know when we see our AC curve. So if I draw my AC curve right there, look at that. You see that the price, the cost is more. So this whole part here represents economic profit. Do you see that this is identical to, this is identical to this one. Where is it? To this one. It's more or less the same. No, 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 not this one. But the one for the one for economic where is it? This one. It's identical to this one. Economic profit. The only difference, look, I'm lost to this one. The only difference is look at the demand curve there. Do you see that that demand curve is elastic? And this one is this one is elastic, that one is inelastic. So is the firm making I say it's economic profit. How do I know that? then I'll have to prove it. So to prove it, I use the formula AR minus AC. So what is our AR? Our AR is 15 rands minus, what is our AC? Our AC is 10 rands. So what's the difference? The difference is five rands. So do you see that this five rand is what? It's positive. So it being positive means the firm is making a, sorry, an economic, economic profit. All right, as simple as that. The next, okay, so there we have it. 
our g is equal to a r our m r profit maximizing point where these two curves meet point e and that's our price this is the cost a c as simple as that now in the long run we have a different scenario uh, i can also do it there but let me draw a new one in the long run we have we can have this kind of a scenario okay this will be our demand curve that has shifted so this is our d is equal to a r d is equal to a r because there are many firms in this industry so at the end of the day we will see a m r we can see a scenario like this where the demand curve shifts like this so when this kind of a scenario happens this was our demand curve at first and this is our current price so our price was there and now it drops to something like this now if we were making an economic profit let's say there i'm doing it fast so, because i'll go and explain it there right this is our mc there so we before the shift so this can be one one like that before the shift and this shift is caused by new firms entering the industry so our own demand curve will shift to the left something like that so this is what i'm explaining there and i've explained it here so you can go through and you can read so like i said this then becomes our ac in the long run and this is our mc in the long run like that all right moving on to other concepts okay so anyway this is this sums uh, I thought I was going to do economic loss in this lesson, so it means it's in the next lesson. So our homework is, why would you not participate in the market under the conditions of monopolistic? This question is trying to say, what are the disadvantages of monopolistic? Alright, so thank you so much. I'll see you in the next lesson, which is lesson 76.